You know, I've noticed something. There are a lot of silent watchers on this channel. Come on out of your shell, introduce yourselves in the comment section. Let us know about yourself, which cameras you have. Everybody here is pretty nice. Nobody's gonna get upset with you. I get it, I'm shy as well, but sometimes it's better just to throw yourself out there and introduce yourself because that's how we grow and connect. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the Sony ZV-1. I've had this camera for almost two years now and I've learned so much with it. And I feel like there's probably people out there who are either about to buy this camera or maybe have just bought this camera, or maybe you've had the camera for a long time, but I figured I would share the information that I've had and that I've learned about this camera with you all so that you can utilize it in your videos. I wish somebody would have made a video like this when it first came out, but they didn't, so I will. I'm Professor Joe, your confidant and life coach, and at this academy, we talk about all things camera gear, filmmaking, and how to make better videos. If there's something that's bothering you about your camera gear, just leave it in the comments section and you will get some free life coaching either by myself or the upperclassmen that belong to this channel. I've made a lot of videos of some of the tips and tricks that we talk about in this video. And if you wanna take a deeper dive into some of those tips, I'll leave those videos in the description. The first 16 tips that we're gonna cover are inside of the camera. So if you have your ZV-1 ready, make sure that the battery is fully charged. And then the last four steps are things that are on the outside of the camera. One of the most used shortcuts that I use on the ZV-1 and that I'm pretty surprised doesn't have the paint worn off of it is the little trash can button. I changed that to autofocus, manual focus, toggle, and I'm constantly pressing that button to make sure that my focus is locked in where I want it to be after the autofocus does the hard work. If you're a little confused about how to set that up, I've made a video about it and I will leave that in the description below. To piggyback off of autofocus and manual focus toggle, we're gonna go to tip number two, touch tracking. I set touch tracking up on my display so I can touch whatever it is I want the camera to focus on. And then all I do is press that little trash can button to lock in the focus. But touch tracking is so important because sometimes the camera doesn't know what you wanna focus on. So make sure to set up touch tracking in your camera. The third tip I have for anybody who owns a ZV-1 who wants to go out there and shoot is to set your picture profile to s Tone. That way you barely have to do any color grading in post and you're also getting the most out of the dynamic range out of this camera. I know there's no such thing as s Tone picture profile in this camera, but I did some finagling with the picture profiles and I found a perfect customized picture profile that matches s Tone and I'll leave that video in the description so you guys can take a look at it. I pretty much leave that picture profile on this camera at all times and it has eliminated so much post-production work for me and I'm getting a really good image out of the ZV-1. All the colors look natural, the skin tones look natural. When I go outside, the greens and the reds look natural. So I highly recommend that picture profile. Tip number four is for those of you who do interviews or vlogging or any type of shot where you're shooting another human being. All right, cut. So how do you think it went? Honestly, worth it. And that is to turn your zebras on and turn them to about 70. That's where I found the sweet spot is to be. So if you turn your zebras on to 70 and then you expose to make sure there's no zebras on the skin, then your skin will be perfectly exposed. If you don't use zebras, then there's a possibility that your skin might be overexposed or underexposed. And if it's underexposed, when you try to bring it back and post, it just looks grainy. It doesn't look like 100%. But once you turn zebras on and you set it to 70, I find that the skin tones are exposed perfectly with very minimum post-production work. Tip number five is to set your function menu. This is the way that I set my function menu up. And it's another button that I'm pretty surprised doesn't have the paint worn off of it because I use it pretty much on every single shoot I go on. There's not enough custom buttons on the outside of the camera, so that's when the function menu comes in. I feel like the things in my function menu are what I use most and they prevent me from having to dig through the menu system in order to find whatever it is that I'm looking for. And you can set up your function menu however you want. All you do is go to tab two, page eight, function menu set, and then you can just go to town with both your video and your photo. Tip number six is to make sure that my audio record level is somewhere close in proximity to where I can get to it very quickly because I find myself constantly looking at my audio record level while I'm talking to make sure that my voice isn't peaking. 
try to keep my voice somewhere between negative six and negative 12, and then I'm good to go. Now, if I'm outside, then the audio record levels are gonna be different. If I'm holding the camera out in front of my face compared to on a tripod, the audio record levels are gonna be different. So you can see how important it is to make sure that you're keeping an eye on your audio record levels. Tip number seven is to put format inside of your star menu. Every single time I go out to shoot, I format my SD card so that I have a clean slate and I don't run into any problems where I run out of storage and then the only way to get that storage back is to format my SD card and then I erase everything that I just recorded. Or I have to put in a second SD card and now I have two SD cards and I have to go home and remember all this stuff. So it's always best to just format your SD cards before you even walk out the door. After, you offload your data. Because I don't want you to get mad at me if you format your SD card before you offload your videos. Tip number eight is to change your focus mode to center. That way, whatever the camera is pointing at and there's a little square inside the center. Now this is great when you're doing B-roll work, if you're on a gimbal or somewhere in a spot that you can't just keep on touch tracking the screen. You just put it on center. Now whatever the camera is looking at in the center of that little square will be in focus. I pretty much leave my camera set in that and it is so nice. I know a lot of people say go wide, but I like to keep it center. That way I'm pinpoint on what I'm focused on. And tip number nine is focus peaking. So when you throw it into manual focus, it's nice to see what's actually in focus because the display only shows you so much. But when you do focus peaking, you can see the outline with red, what is in focus and what is not. And I find that very helpful, especially when I'm outside. Bright sunlight is coming down on my display and it's hard to tell what's in focus and what is not. But focus peaking lets me know and it takes the burden away from not knowing what's in focus. Tip number 10 is custom buttons, but you already knew about that, so I'm not even gonna talk about it. Short of letting you know, it's on tab two, page eight, and that one is seared into my brain. Tab two, page eight, tab two, page eight. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night with the cold sweat saying tab two, page eight, and that's how you can set up your custom buttons. Tip number 11 is custom white balance. I may be a hypocrite because I'm telling you to do something that I don't even do, but I know it's best and I wish I got into a habit of actually going out there and using custom white balance, but it's so easy just to go auto white balance. But I'm telling you so many times I've come home from a shoot and I've realized that I should have custom white balance because my white balance is all crazy. It looks green, it looks blue, and then I have to try to fix it in post-production. It never looks the same, but if I just custom white balance, so please, Custom white balance, it's super easy. I made a video about it and I will leave that in the description if you're interested in how to custom white balance. Tip number 12 is aperture priority. This is such a great little exposure tool. I don't use it as much as I want to, but the most important thing to me is getting the aperture correct. That way my subject is really brought forward and the background's blurred out. Even if I have to crank up the shutter speed a little bit, I know you guys are gonna get mad at me for saying that, but listen, to me, aperture is the most important. Just throw an extra ND filter on it if you don't like to raise up your shutter speed. As a quick lesson, aperture priority just maintains the aperture that you want and it adjusts the ISO and the shutter speed. Sometimes all crazy, but to me it doesn't really matter because I got my aperture locked in place. So a tip from me to you is to use aperture priority, or at least try it out. Tip number 13 is switching from auto exposure to manual exposure. I know it's scary, I've been there, but once I started to force myself into manual exposure and learn the exposure settings, then I became more in control of what my camera was doing, so I was able to optimize the way the picture looks. If you're coming into this classroom a little late and you're a little lost on exposure, don't worry, we made a video about it and we'll leave that in the description. And that covers all of the basics, so you don't need to know anything about it. But once you watch that video, you'll start to get an understanding and you'll grasp exposure. Then you'll be able to expose your camera properly to get the best looking picture out of the ZV-1. Tip number 14 is to turn stabilization off if you're doing a headshot and your camera's on the tripod. So many times I left active stabilization on and it punches in, I don't know, 10%. So I'm like, what the heck is wrong with the focal length of my lens? But once I turn active stabilization off, once I'm on a tripod, it punches back a little bit more and then it gives me a better frame. Number 15 is using the high frame rate mode in the camera. I know people say that the quality just falls off when you use it, but if you light your subject properly or if you do it outside, then I'm telling you, you're gonna get some really good video. When you switch it to HFR mode and you go up to 960 frames per second, the shutter speed increases to 1000, so you have to really make sure that you have a proper lighting setup. The sun works just fine. I am telling you, you could make an entire YouTube channel on slow motion shots with the ZV-1 in 960 frames per second. Some of the shots that I've gotten are so cool and it's almost unbelievable that I was able to achieve those shots with the ZV-1. And all I had to do was make sure my subject was lit properly. 
Tip number 16 and the final thing that we're gonna talk about inside of the camera is to turn stabilization on if you are walking with the camera. If you have stabilization set to standard or even off, I find that the footage is almost unusable unless you're on a gimbal. But if you turn it on to active, it does punch in a little bit. So that's where I would go to tip number 17, which is pick up the wide angle lens from Ulanzi. Because once you pick that thing up, you get back all of that punch in that you lost when you switched it to active stabilization. And active stabilization will just help make your video look better. Active stabilization isn't great. You're not gonna have super smooth footage, but at least it gets it to a point where you have usable footage compared to when you were in standard or you don't even use stabilization at all. And you pretty much just have to throw that footage away and it's just a big waste of time and a big heartache. Tip number 18, if you're picking up the ZV-1 or you've already picked it up, and I'm sure you probably know this by now, but it's to pick up more batteries because the battery on the ZV-1 does not last very long, it gives you a good hour, maybe less if you're shooting in 4K 24. And the more batteries you have, the better. They're pretty cheap, so it's worth it. You might as well just pick up two or three extra. I'll leave some in the description so that you guys can take a look. Tip number 19 is buy a cage for your ZV-1. Anybody who's had the ZV-1 knows that it's a pretty good camera, but once you add a cage to it, that's when you really start to grow with your camera because you can add accessories and really take your video to the next level. I've added an external monitor, a shotgun mic, an external light, what else? A handle, a tripod bottom. I really decked out this thing and I was really surprised how smooth my footage was when I had it built out. I'll also leave that video in the description below. And tip number 20 is to pick up a gimbal. I know active stabilization is good in the ZV-1, but it's nothing compared to what it looks like when you throw your camera on a gimbal. Some people say just throw it over Catalyst, but that's just extra steps. And you can do whatever you want, but I like to get the footage and the video right in camera so that when I go to post-production, I have to do very minimal amount of stabilization and color correction and all that type of stuff. I like to just import my footage and start editing the actual clip without having to go through those extra steps. So these are just some of the tips and tricks that I've learned with my ZV-1. Maybe I missed some, and maybe you have some that I didn't mention. Let me know in the comments below, and all of your fellow peers will appreciate that as well. I look forward to meeting all of the silent watchers in the comments below. If you're having any issues with your camera gear or you're not understanding something, just let us know, and one of us will help you better understand. I'm Joe, your professor and life coach, and this is the Film Alliance Academy. Until the next video, have a great morning, afternoon, or night, wherever you are.